Hello, my name is Mark, and this video lectures about rational exponents. Okay, so a rational exponent is really is another way to write a radical. So the best way for I think you can evaluate a rational exponent is first convert it to a radical and then do what you know. Okay. So to convert a rational exponent to a radical, what you do is you rewrite it under the root symbol. So I'm going to write number 1. I'm going to write 81 under the root symbol. Okay. And what's going to happen next is the numerator of your rational now becomes your exponent, and the denominator of the rational exponent becomes the index. Well, when the index of your rational exponent is 2, that's understood to be the square root. Okay, And when we have a 2 as our index in the radical, we usually don't write that. If there's nothing in the index of your radical like I have right now, it's understood to be a 2. So that's understood to be the square root of 81. <coughs> And the square root of 81 is just asking you what? What two identical numbers you multiply together to get 81? What is that? That's 9 times 9. So then the square root of 81 is 9. Okay. Number 2 has a similar rational exponent as number 1. So I'm going to write the square root of 0. Well, what two numbers multiply together to give you zero? Well, obviously zero. So then the square root of zero is zero. Let's look at number three. Okay, so once again, that rational exponent is one half. So two is in the denominator, so two becomes the index. If two is our index, we don't write it because it's understood to be a two. So negative one is the radicand. And the radicand is your number on the inside. Your index is a number in the crevice. Okay. So here, let's think. What two numbers multiply together to give us negative 1? Real numbers, that is. Well, let's see here. Hmm. 1 times 1, well, that's positive 1. And negative 1 times negative 1, that is still positive 1. So we really don't have any two identical numbers, real numbers, that multiply together to give us negative 1. So then here our answer will just be undefined. Or no real solution. Okay, it's no real solution because there are no two real numbers that we can multiply together to give us negative 1. Let's look at number four, the last one. Negative one over 32 raised to the one-fifth power. Okay. So what is our denominator of this rational exponent? Our denominator is five. So the denominator becomes the index of the radical. So we put a five there. And then one is the numerator of this radical, of this rational exponent. So it's negative 1 over 32 raised to the 1 power, or negative 1 over 32 raised to the 1 power, anything raised to the 1 power itself. So let's analyze this. Now we're asking ourselves, what number can we multiply by 5 times to get a negative 1 over 32? So let's think about that. Let's see here, maybe it's 2. Let's see here, uh, negative 1 half times a negative 1 half, that is a positive 1 fourth, times another negative 1 half, that is a po negative 1 over 8, times another half, that's negative, that's positive 1 over 16, times another half, that would be negative 1 over 32, so that answer is negative 1 half. Excuse me there. Okay, so what we need to review here is look at this. It is possible to have a negative under an odd exponent. Okay, it is possible to have a negative number under an odd exponent because of the fact that you can have a number multiplied by an odd number of times 
and get a negative number. You can't have a negative under an even root, in other words, square root, fourth root, sixth root, okay, because there are no even number of negative numbers that you can multiply together to get you another negative number. Because anytime you have an even number of negatives, that would make the answer positive automatically. Okay? So thank you for listening to this video lecture. And I hope you listen to more lectures. You can look me up on the internet, www.supergenius99.com.